we're going to talk about letting your patients exhale, which is really important. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. important for everyone to exhale. Actually, let's take a deep breath in and all exhale right now. Yeah, I'm feeling better already. You like it? Yeah, talk all to right. the people. So we take a deep breath in and deep breath out. Now what I want you to do is take a deep breath in, feel your lungs all the way up as full as you can, and imagine that I took this mask, strapped it to your face in your current condition with your lungs as full as they are right now, and I forced even more air into your lungs. Go and breathe out, don't pass out. I have seen us do this to patients clinically. One is torture. You can imagine, you've got really full lungs and I'm forcing more air, as uncomfortable and as panic uh, inducing as that could be. And two, it's very, very dangerous. So when you have a patient on non-invasive ventilation, you need to make sure we're allowing them to exhale. And this has become a, a bigger deal post pandemic because we have different types of equipment that can get, if get used together, can harm your patients. So first of all, um, old school invasive mechanical ventilation, I have a two limb circuit, right? One side is for inhalation, one side is for exhalation. Um, and so, you know, I don't need an exhalation port because it all comes through this circuit. And then classically, anything put distal to this Y or this exhalation side is mechanical dead space. However, when I go to my non-invasive circuits, here I have a single limb. I have a single limb. I have a pressure tube as well, but I have a single limb. So there's not a limb for me to exhale through. I need a hole to allow my patient to excel. And classically, that hole has been on the circuit, right? There's a little hole here that air is constantly blowing out of. And when I exhale, all my exhaled gas is coming out of that hole. Now, there was a fear that I have a bunch of equipment distal to this hole. So there was a fear that all this equipment is becoming mechanical bed space. It's actually not true. When you, when you look at models, the way this gas is continually flowing, it's washing out this mask. So this mask is not becoming dead space, but there was a fear of it. And so what happened probably about 10 years ago is masks started coming out that had the exhalation port on the masks themselves. And while dead space, mechanical dead space wasn't really an issue, when we looked at these masks, these vented masks, these masks with the exhalation ports on the mask themselves, they were actually washing out physiologic dead space in addition to the mechanical dead space. So these vented masks are pretty beneficial for your patients, uh, especially if ventilation is important, a bad COPD exacerbation, a bad asthma exacerbation. Vented masks became the standard pretty much everywhere. We had these holes until 2020 when these holes on the masks became COVID cannons, right? Because there's no good way to filter if I have these holes on the masks. And so what we started doing was we switched back to non-vented masks with the exhalation port on the circuit. And now we can just put a viral filter in between the mask and the exhalation port and I'm filtering out the exhalation. This works all good and well if there's an exhalation port on your circuit and if it's uncapped. Most circuits now are coming with exhalation ports but it has a plug that you can plug there are still some non-invasive circuits out there that do not have an exhalation port on the circuit. And if you have a non-vented mask and a circuit without an exhalation port, you are going to torture your patients. And I have seen this happen. And we ultimately, as the physician, we're responsible for this. This is something that we need to be looking out for. Make sure your patient has an exhalation port. And then the final thing that I'll mention, if you are using a conventional ventilator, for non-invasive ventilation, this is a two-limb circuit. I need my patient to fully exhale through this circuit. And so if you're using this, then you need a non-vented mask. Respiratory therapists are classically very, um, they have engineer's mind and they can work stuff out, right? And so I've seen tape put over the vented mask holes. That's not ideal. If you're using a, a, a traditional ventilator in non-invasive mode, get a non-vented mask to allow that your vent is working properly, um, or find a traditional non-invasive ventilator that uses a single limb circuit. Don't torture your patients, allow them to exhale. We're gonna talk more about non-invasive ventilation here in just a few minutes. Thanks guys.